I just heard your presentation uh, at uh, the Banff World Media. Um, in the presentation, you gave a very wide and engaging uh, talk on various topics. And some are very out there and cutting edge, but then like they are very con conceptualized. So when you meet a corporate client, how do you engage them and bring them down to earth? What we discover is that corporate clients are also humans, and so when we talk mm -hmm. about connecting to people and connecting to people in profound and deep ways, they do it. Uh, corporate clients are no longer corporate anymore. We understand that the world is something that's dynamic and interactive, and has feelings and sensations, and needs are personalized and integrated. And corporate clients really want to carry along on that kind of thing, and they want to be able to engage with people in those sorts of intimate ways. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, let, let's take one uh, example uh, that you talked about in your presentation, the chewing gum example. Uh, and now you're off stage, you can actually mention the brand. So which I brand was it? Oh, really? Go not live June 16th. Oh, okay, so it's not live yet. Keep your eyes on Young and Dundas, mm -hmm. you're going to see the brand. It's mm -hmm. going to be um, really responsible for this amazing chew-off, this innovation mm -hmm. in that. Right. So in that uh, in the presentation, you mentioned that you're measuring uh, not the brain wave, but more on the muscle. Is that what you're doing? We, we, tell me a bit more. So normally, what we do is we create installations that measure people's brain waves, mm -hmm. the amount of focus, relaxation, various different brain states that they engage in when they do a task or engage with someone on screen. For this activation, we instead of using brain waves, actually are measuring muscle activity as well as some neural impulses, mm -hmm. primarily muscle activity. Uh, in order to, to be like stickies on their muscle, no, no, no. on the face, no? The exact same part. Oh, okay. So, so like we we, the headgear that they yeah. wear. The very oh. same headgear that we use to measure every mm -hmm. muscle. We do sophisticated algorithmic processing. So the things that are normally noise, the things that we normally need to get rid of, the chews and the movements that mm -hmm. make the muscles. In this case, we're able to oh. utilize to create a really connected brand mm -hmm. between right. the client mm -hmm. and the consumer. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, it's based on the, the previous training of the software. Then you know like what are the chewing and what are the stuff that now exactly. it's not noise. Those are the things that you actually want to measure. a lot of time looking at all the different signals mm -hmm. that come off of your head that you can measure from electro, you know, ocular, muscular, um, you can actually do heart rate even inside the headset. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very precise at being able to tease out those signals and know what the appropriate application mm -hmm. for each individual. How accurate? Let's take the heart rate for example, because that's easy to measure. Heart rate and how, how accurate is that measuring from your brain wave uh, to the actual heart rate? So the heart rate we don't measure from the brain wave. We can actually just see the pulse. Of your oh, the pulse. Okay. So you see the pulse. Oh, and it actually, actually matches with your heart rate. So, so it's like count for count, and, and that is perfect. Like, uh, okay, in that case. All right. Um, you mentioned that there are limitations the system has. Uh, so can you elaborate on uh, the kind of uh, limitations? Sure. Well, I hope the system has limitations because it's just, you know, the first stage is the technology. Mm -hmm. What you can do with it is still incredibly nifty, but the kinds of signals that we can detect are still quite limited. So most interactions tend to exist with a sort of alpha beta interaction around focus and relaxation. That's mm -hmm. something that's so focus and relaxation, that's the key one, right? The most powerful one. Because it's incredibly reliable for mm -hmm. users to engage with the very first time. You can get more sophisticated with your algorithms and more sophisticated with the number of electrodes. You more use. reliable because uh, they don't need much training and they can like yes. pick that up quickly? Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So those two will be the strongest one, and, and the others, they are... The others, there are lots of fantastic signals you can mm -hmm. use, including um, the sensory motor response over areas mm -hmm. C3 and C4, where mm -hmm. you can actually see someone imagining the movement of a limb. Oh, okay. That takes several hours to train. Okay, so it's the network has to adapt to each individual. Uh, and it's the training process, kind of like, is, am I using the right analysis, uh, analogy, that uh, in the old days, uh, speech uh, recognition, you have to train in that one. Exactly. So it's the, the brain's wave recognition. It's kind of at the old, in those days, that kind of technology stage. Make, make sense? Yes, actually, that's an analogy I use mm -hmm. very often. 
the thought control technologies where voice activated mm -hmm. technology was about 35 years ago. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, someone else asked you about uh, using brainwave uh, as authentication. So here, here's an intriguing question. Uh, is brainwave unique, I mean, if it is... Uh, is to be used in any remote way or for authentication purpose. It kind of has to be not like uh, our fingerprints. Uh, I guess ne it can never be as close. Uh, but uh, how, how, like, how unique is brainwave? So somebody asked the question whether you mm -hmm. could use brainwaves for authentication. Mm -hmm. In the current state of the technology, and certainly with existing consumer hardware, mm -hmm. you cannot. It is something that we could see occurring sometime down the road, like in the next decade. Mm -hmm. um, right, but he's, you see, uh, let me let's stay on the theoretical side of things. So even the same person, you mean the same person theoretically will generate the same brain wave uh, over time, or like won't, won't it change? There are a few different ways that you could do it. One mm -hmm. way is by creating codes that only you know. So you could imagine. Oh, you can think that code. Exactly. Ah. So you can think the code, mm. and it might just not. It might not just be a word that you're thinking. Right, it might right. be a word coupled with the visual association. Ah, coupled with, you know, imaginary that's neat. Uh, so you can create incredibly right. complex codes. So very complex. You know. mm -hmm. so very complex picture or what well, you visualize and wanna, and that can't be easily duplicated. Uh, yeah, exactly. right. But as long as it, I guess as long as it generates consistent pattern over years, then then you can use it to authenticate. Uh, okay. So uh, you mentioned Steve Mann. Uh, that's one of the U of T professor. Uh, how, how do you uh, guys work with uh, Steve? Steve is a very dear friend and a really inspirational scientist. Mm -hmm. um, this technology originally came out of his lab, and we spent a lot of years collaborating together, mm -hmm. understanding what you can do with the technology. And Steve's sort of... So he, he's, he's, it's more like, uh, I don't know, was it measuring brain wave? He has a really a contraption so, putting on his head and so, uh, yes. eye cam and, and stuff. Did he Was he measuring uh, brain wave then? I think he was just transmitting, right? More like yes, so capturing. Steve has quite a number of inventions. Right, right. Has, you know, over a hundred patents to his name. Mm -hmm. Right now he's into hydraulophones and water-based music. So right now he's... Um, into hydraulophones and water-based music. Oh, okay. The invention that you're referring to is the iTab visual system. Mm -hmm. So it's a camera that records and actually is able to screen data directly mm -hmm. into his eye. Right, right. But uh, so how, how does he work with uh, your company now? So he works in the capacity of a research advisor. And then we also create grants together so that his research team can continue to look at problems that are coming out of our lab. Mm -hmm. So we actually work with quite a number of different laboratories mm -hmm. and in-house research team that's quite robust. Mm -hmm. And then we have research projects with probably four or five different institutions. Mm -hmm. How big is your company now? And uh, your, are you guys mostly a research like be, just because it's so cutting edge, are you guys uh, uh, more like a research-based uh, company, or it's actually so fully commercialized and like so making have, money? So we are making money. We are quite commercialized, but we have a very strong R and D arm. So mm -hmm. within our company, you have very strong R and D from neuroscientists and engineers. Um, you have people actually creating applications, which are computer programmers as well as artists creating graphics and assets. Mm -hmm. And then you have the sort of software science side. The designers, by designer I don't necessarily mean graphic, by designer I mean human interaction. Designers and anthropologists and people who look at how we naturally want to use this technology and the impact that it's going to make in our future. Mm -hmm. So you guys are actually cash flow positive already and, and making money? Mm -hmm. how, how old is the company? Um, we are incorporated in 2009. 2009? Um, mm -hmm. We became Interaxon probably in 2007. But we've been working with the technology, doing our first installations and applications mm -hmm. since 2003. Mm -hmm. So were you one of the founder uh, of the companies and uh, you, you're the CEO of the company, right? Also correct. Mm -hmm. Right. So what do you see the company in the next few years, uh, uh, next year or next few years, uh, based on the, the Chewing Gum project? looks like you're reaching out to corporate uh, and, and advertising company. I mean, are you talking to ad company, Saatchi and Saatchi, or publicists or whatever? Like, what, what is what are your, you guys thinking in terms of business-wise? So business-wise, we kind of have three streams. One is marketing installations, which act kind of as our playground where we get to try technology in large scale with lots of users. We're there, we're looking at how they interact with technology, we're hearing what they say about it. And then we're able to take that information and use it to create consumer products, brainwave-based applications that people really want to use because we're spending a lot of time actually figuring out how people do it. 
So we have consumer products that are going to be coming out in about 14 months. So they'll be iPad-based or production, mm. tablet and smartphone-based applications, mm. um, and allow you some practical things that I can do mm. right now. What price range are you targeting? Right. It's about $150. $150. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So is it going to be made in uh, Canada, or are you going to make it in the States or China? Uh, well, we're doing all the programming in houses as well. Mm -hmm. So all of that is made in Toronto, Canada, mm -hmm. and then we're still examining the manufacturing portions. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so 150 bucks to start, and you're gonna break 100 bucks uh, and make it cheaper in with time. <laughs> Ideally. All right. Well, thanks very well, and uh, for the interview, and uh, enjoy your uh, presentation this morning. Excellent. Thank you very much.